Hi, today we will be building a new simulation from scratch of a cylindrical radio frequency cavity and obtain its operating modes. So in order to do that, we go to File, New, Simulation. This is an entirely empty simulation. Therefore, we're going to start at the very beginning with the description. A short title for the simulation is Cylindrical RF Cavity. And a little bit of a description obtain operating modes for a cylindrical cavity. Long description. Here I want to add a note for myself in order to get the rating modes. Run for 2,000 time steps with a dump frequency of 25 steps after the cavity has been excited. So, now that we have an idea of what we want to simulate, first we will start adding some constants. First we want to add a frequency that we will be exciting the cavity with. So we go to constants, right click on constants, add user defined, and we'll, I'm going to name it, I'm going to name the frequency and give it a value of 1 gigahertz. So 1 E9. All the constant units are in SI. Then I want to add another constant which corresponds to the time that I will be exciting the cavity for, and now I will call that time excite. Time excite will be Description time until the maximum current value is reached. So the the current for which we just define the frequency that'll be one e to the negative nine, so one nanosecond. And I want to parameterize my grid around my frequency. I'm going to add another user defined constant named number of cells per lambda. How many cells do I want per wavelength? And I want, and I will want 100. Now we don't have any parameters defined. That will be our next step. First parameter I want to add is actually the wavelength. So I want to add a parameter named lambda. Description wavelength of the excitation current frequency. And this will be the light, the speed of light, divided by the frequency that we defined. Next, I want to add another parameter. That will be the length of my cylindrical cavity. I'm going to call it L cylind. The description is, and you don't have to add a description. One. You don't have to add a description for everything. And let's say we're going to make this as big as our wavelength. So as one wavelength in size. Next, I will add the radius of the cylinder. And I will also parameterize this around lambda and make it lambda. I'm going to make it half a wavelength. My next parameter is going to be 
the surrounding shell of the cylinder. So the cylinder will have a certain thickness and it will be made out of metal. So now I want to define the surrounding, the enclosing cylinder essentially. So I'm going to call it L cylin out and it will be just a little bit bigger than the original length and the inner cavity. So it will be the length of the inner cavity times 10%. I will also add the radius of the shell. Which will be the same proportion. So R cylin times log part one. So ten percent bigger. Now I want to automatically select my location. I want everything to be centered around zero. So I will make offsets, uh, parameters that will be used as offsets uh, in the X position, which X will be our uh, axial direction. So I'm going to call the first one X offset cylinder in. So that is for the cavity. And that will be offset in the negative X direction by half of the cylinder length. And similarly with the outer shell, I'll be offset by negative L cylin out. Perfect. Next I'm going to add, I'm going to parameterize the number of grid cells in each direction. So I'm going to call the number of cells in the x direction nx. Now to remind myself what nx is number of cells in the x direction. And I want to parameterize NX in terms of the length of the cylinder, of the whole cylinder, so the outer cylinder, and the number of cells per lambda. So I'm going to get an integer. So for that, I use R int. And the, my, largest, um, my largest geometry is R L cylinder out in the X direction, of course times the number of cells per lambda divided by lambda. That gives me an automatic 110 cells in the x direction. This has not been assigned to the grid yet, so for that reason you don't see 110 cells in the x direction yet, but once we get to a grid setting here, that will be taken care of. So now I want to add the number of um, parameters in all other directions. So um, copy this description and copy it here with the change that these are in the y direction. I want to do something similar in the y direction, both y and z. So our simulation is going to be symmetric uh, around x. So y and z will have the same coordinates. So I'm going to copy this description paste it, but instead of the length of the cylinder, we're going to have the radius of the cylinder. So now we have 55 cells in the y direction, and last but not least, and the number of cells in the z direction, but since we already know that it's that z and y coordinates are the same, I'm just going to make this directly equal to n, y. And here is the number of cells in the A description. Now I also want to define a current that will go from one side through the center of the cylinder. So I'm going to give it some starting and ending parameters. So I'm going to call it this parameter x minimum for the current. And x min cur is going to be 0 0.01 times 2 times L sin and x max cur is going to be on the opposite side. So it'll be minus x min cur. 
and the white position. And then it'll start at one side of the cylinder, so it'll be minus R cylinder. Now I can put R cylinder with just the radius of the cavity, or I can put R cylinder out. And I prefer to put R cylinder out because even though the current and the current hits can hit the metal. Put our cylinder in. Uh, there's a chance that it might not touch the metal, and we want it to be touching the metal from one side of the cylinder to another, from one curved side to another. And I'm gonna add the same Y max curve. I'll be the opposite minus Y min curve. And in the Z direction be also a pretty small area. And lastly, we want the excitation to be that of a sync function. The sync function has a frequency range in which it excites, and that frequency range has a low value and has a high value, and those values have to be around the frequency that we initially defined. So, I will add a frequency low parameter. I'll be just a little bit lower than our initial frequency. Okay, so I'm going to excite that frequency low and it'll be frequency time just 20% bigger and the high frequency that we excite will be high. will be 1.4. Now, what's important also is the range between these two frequencies. So I'm going to call it frequency delta. And that delta will be frequency high minus frequency low divided by 4. All right. These are all the parameters that we're going to need. It's time now I save the simulation. So go to File, Save Simulation. And I will make a new folder. Call it Cylinder Pull Cavity. Great. OK, so we've done, con we've done worked on the description. We've worked on the constants. We've worked on the parameters. Next thing is our basic settings. So let's see, for a surface meshing tolerance, we will leave it at 0.5. We're going to need 110 time steps to excite it for long enough. We're going to need steps between them, so 55. Then precision double, and we we'll leave that as a default. Three, uniform electromagnetic. No particles, no periodicity. This looks straight. Okay, we'll do another save. You can also do control list to save. 